All right. Welcome everybody to John Hanks' Pipe Dreams. I'm John Hanks. This is uh, the first podcast that we're doing. Um, happy to get it going. This is uh, my co-host, Chad Carahalis. Hey, how you doing? We got Ben Lang, our technical wizard extraordinaire. Uh, What's up? We're, we're out here in the field making it happen. And um, basically, I've been wanting to do a podcast for a long time. Uh, Loosely revolved around whatever, you know, pipe dreams, uh, skateboarding, etc. And uh, I thought it'd be really funny to do the first one with uh, uh, jo- my jaw, a broken, my jaw wired shut. So um, I have my jaw wired shut right now. I don't know if you can hear that in my voice, but um, kind of fucked up. And so the first, uh, the, the first theme or issue of the first show of John Hanks's Pipecast will be injuries. And um, so we're going to talk about injuries today and whatever else uh, we want to talk about. Um, so yeah, I uh, I got a broken jaw and <laughs> that kind of sucks. Yeah, I bet it does. Have you lost any weight because of it? Oh yeah. That's the main thing. I lost a lot of weight. Oh, okay. Yeah. For you, what's a lot? Uh, well, I was underweight when it happened. I was at about 155. Jesus. Um, I should be about 165, 170 with, like, my, you know, traditionally with my height and everything. But being a gypsy in California for a year and stuff and, like, you know, sleeping in my car and eating one peanut butter sandwich a day. Getting gout. I was, uh, yeah, getting gout, no, for sure, because the gout made me um, change my diet. So all of a sudden, I didn't have all these meats and stuff that I was used to eating. And then I kind of went on my little California flip out, and I uh, I was, you know, I lost weight. So I was at about 155, broken jaw, didn't eat for about five days after it happened because it... Uh, you know what I'm saying? It um, it's hard to eat. It's hard. Well, I was high on morphine when I left the hospital, and it's really hard to eat when you have a broken jaw before yeah. it's wired shut. Like, eat. Uh, oh, didn't wire it shut right away? No, dude. It was it was crazy. It was like um, I've never seen anything like this before. Maybe it's just because I'm older now or more directly involved in it. But it it was almost like they were booking a hotel room. Like <laughs> like the oral surgeon had to call over to. Um, the hospital and be like oh yeah we want to do this surgery like we want to you know wire this guy's jaw shut when can we get a room <laughs> and they're like making arrangements and shit and meanwhile i'm there and you know and also um you know i'm one of the you know it sounds like a horror movie but i'm one of the uninsured yeah. you know so it's there's a lot of rigmarole pushing you around oh yeah yeah red tape and stuff so it, it was about um You know, it happened on the 29th, and I went in there on the 31st on Halloween, Halloween night. And that was fucking scary. Scary. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. What Um, was the scene like in there? Were there, like, any crazy Halloween injuries in there? Um, well, it was like, I went in there at, like, 3 in the afternoon, and they did all my blood work and everything, and then, like, I, like, checked in, and, you know, they they give you a sedative and so you're kind of out of it and then you're you're chilling and i was chilling and then um this guy comes in into the uh the post or the pre-op the anesthesiologist and he has a little consultation with you and he comes in and he's like all right so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna jam this thing up your nose he's like i'm really gonna jam it in there right and i was like dude like what the fuck bro yeah i was like i'm gonna be asleep right i was like fucking just leave it at that dude yeah. do what you do while you're in there don't but... tell me i don't need to know yeah um it's the second time i've had my jaw wired shut in my life and so uh you know it kind of sucks because you know it's a blessing and a curse yeah. you know what's coming like at that moment i'm like dude i know you know, you know i prepare for it but it's like 
fuck I have to prepare for. Yeah, what well, yeah, I mean, I remember this happened when I was 22, and it, I just, it being the single most um, frustrating uh, time period of life. I don't even really, I think I blocked a lot of it out. Yeah. I don't really remember much of any of it. I remember being at a party in Newberry and uh, having all <laughs> having this blender and all these banana drinks in it, and I poured a bunch of vodka in it, and I was like cruising around this big blender and had all this shit on my teeth but, and stuff. So like when you were like pre-op surgery before you go in, <clears throat> so like did they knock knock you out all the way before you get your jaw wired shut? Or no, like, they, they they ease you into it kind of yeah. like they give you like a sedative. Yeah. Like I don't know, probably like a Xanax or something. They're just calming you down, and then eventually, you know. Are you asleep when they you wake? You fall asleep and wake up with your jaw wide shut? Are you? You're like you're like drunk. You're like doped up, but you go into like you lay down on the operating table, which is super uh, scary. They give you the the nitrous, or they just go at it. They no no they they you're fully like, like, you go in there and you lay down and then like, it's. Like, for me, I was like, holy shit, this is super scary, because they're, like, wheeling you in, and you're, like... All fucked up, probably. You're, yeah, <laughs> you're all fucked up, and they wheel you in, and then you, you get it next to the, the the actual operating table where they're going to do the thing, and they move you to the other, and you see all these people walking around in the room, like, sharpening tools, and, like, all these, like, like talking... It's super... It's like a butcher shop. <laughs> yeah, you're, like, still awake. And so they're putting you in this thing, and you're looking at all these crazy clamps and clasps on the fucking thing. But then, honestly, by the time you actually lay down on the table, you're fucking fully out. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. You know? And then you wake up, and, um... Whew. Man, I mean, that's... that's Super shitty. Yeah, dude, that sounds insane. Yeah. The whole process. I'm lucky to have a little bit better of an outlook on life this time yeah. around than when I was 22. So, like, uh, intake on shakes, do you find, like, difference, like, store-bought stuff compared to, like, I'm saying, like, whatever, ju- whatever juices? But the first time I did it, um, I lived fucking exclusively on Ensure and Boost and, um, <laughs> and, and large chocolate shakes from McDonald's. I was 22. Yeah, I was yeah. living in Alston. So I would just go over to the McDonald's on Harvard Ave. Large shake. And just, I'd get three of them at a time. Oh <laughs> <I'd> my <laughs> God. Chocolate, chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. <laughs> and just chill. <laughs> And, you know, this was in my vat box day, so I had a little fucking vat box, and I would just, you know. Three McDonald's shakes for, for like, a meal. That'd be, like, the big meal. That'd be, like, dinner. And then I'd just crank Ensure and Boost all day long. But this time, though, you're more conscious about it. This time I decided that if I was only going to eat whatever, like, if my diet was so restricted and so limited, I chose to... Throw all my money away at Whole Foods. Yeah. I mean, just get the best possible quality of food that did, I can get. Did you do research or did you talk to anybody? Or? No, I just kind of know from my own like living, just, put it just personal. Yeah, and yeah. I've always kind of had a lean toward more. I mean, I don't yeah. always execute it, but I'm I'm more. I've been conscious of like, you know, between working in like nicer restaurants or whatever. Just yeah. be like, I've gotten into food so. I try not to eat shit anyway, like yeah, yeah. a high fructose corn syrup or whatever, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. you know, in a pinch you compromise. Today right, I have yeah. this naked shit, which yeah. uh, supposedly Pepsi owns. They do. Yeah. yeah. And Coca-Cola owns what? Oddwalla? I don't know about that, but I know about that. Yeah. The first statement. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, yeah. Have you guys ever known anyone besides me that broke a jaw? Yeah, Pat did. Pat K? Yeah, he did oh, a wow. wired shot though. Oh wow. Yeah, you masked and went chin down. And like he was at the hospital, his mom came to like, drove from the report to mass was like, you're not wiring the jaw shut. No oh, way. Yeah. She's like she works like she's been like a secretary for a doctor forever and stuff, so like so she like kinda of just like she's like, Don't do it, you know. How did he get over the injury? I mean, kept it shut I guess and ate fucking ibuprofen and percocets. I'm just I guess, I don't know how bad, I don't know, the severity, you know, years to his or something like that, you know, but. Well, I was wondering, like, in medieval times, if someone broke the, it was, you know. You're fucked, you can't eat or anything like that? Yeah. You go to people battle, you die? just broke your fucking jaw. Yeah, like, yeah. what did they do, you know? You, you die. <laughs> yeah. Bandage you up. Just, like, yeah, stop eating? Yeah, a bunch of soup, I guess. Because, like, they probably wouldn't be able to figure that out, and they'd just be like, yeah. he's dead, sir, he can't <laughs> eat, you know, like. 
Such a little one. Can't eat. <laughs> yep. But uh, do you want to talk about what led up to the injury? Um. Yeah, it was a tough. Uh, I mean, my own dumb fault would be the. Uh, uh -oh. that unplug. It's still recording, so. Plug it back in. Uh, my own dumb fault would be uh, a short answer to that. Um, basically, I had some friends in town from Seattle, and uh, it was a really great day. It was a tremendous day. It was. Uh, I had the day off. <clears throat> Woke up. It was sunny out. I was wearing this hat. Uh, I went to Trader Joe's and I got some uh, some meats and cheeses and some of my favorite wine, which is Trader Joe's Petite Syrah. About two bottles of that. And these friends, uh, they had taken really good care of me over the years at times in Seattle and stuff and fed me and looked out for me and stuff. So I kind of wanted to make them proud and show them how well I was doing. So I had this nice little cheese yeah, 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 spread yeah. and shit, you know. Yeah, I got it going on, you know. Yeah. I had some nice weed and some wine and went out to dinner and we're cruising and, you know, and I'm fucking, usually I'm the broke ass. I'm fucking picking up tabs and paying for cabs and shit like that. And it was feeling feeling good, you know. And uh, they were saying, what's uh, new and interesting? And I said, Not the thing that's new and interesting is nothing is new and interesting. I would just go to work, and that's pretty much it. I got a really good job in managing this bar. Things are going great. Ba ba ba. And uh, so we went out and had dinner. My roommates came. <clears throat> we went to this bar. Well, at the restaurant, there was a bar, and this funk band was playing. So we're shaking our asses, and I'm talking to girls and getting really drunk. It was a great time. And then someone had the horrible idea to go get <laughs> one more drink at this dive bar across the street. And um, <clears throat> this is like where there's different, it's almost like Donnie Darko. There's like little different like stories. Like it's all the same event. It ends at the same, but there's like little yeah. like from what I, from what I remember and what people have told me and like, you know, so some say <laughs> that uh that while we're walking across the street i was like talking shit to some dudes like before we got even into the bar don't recall does it sound like me yeah kind of maybe yeah <laughs> all right so go in there get some drinks see a bunch of people i know that i used to work with and, um, you know, you can tell when, you can tell when people don't like you. When you go into a bar with a crew and it's just like, it changes the tone of the place and you can tell. And so I could kind of tell and I fucking, I thought it would be funny to put like $15 in the jukebox at that time. Because I had just came from shaking my ass. So I put in $15 on my credit card on the jukebox. <sighs> Fucking Motorhead and Buzzcocks. Like, that's it. You know? <laughs> that's it. Yeah, like, I was just like, oh, Motorhead. And I just had everything. And I was like, Buzzcocks. And I was just like, you know, people, Motorhead kicks in. People weren't fucking feeling us, you know? <laughs> Ace of Spades or not, you know? Because I was just going right down the line. And uh, we started slam dancing, me and my buddy Sean. And, uh, and then, yeah, that happens, you know? And it's like, so then the bartender creeps up and he's like, saying some shit and then apparently like there's another version of the story like i said one of those donnie darko like space time i don't remember things where i told this guy that this i i said some shit to this guy like like seriously like like i was like something about knocking his teeth out and then um you know basically what happened after that was someone fucking punched me in the face i went down and then there was a number of people on top of me and they were kicking my ass and then um and then someone kicked me in you know while i was down in the other side of my face so 
you know, I can't necessarily get into in the, in the all and outs as far as he said, she said, what happened from there. But basically, what I know what happened was, yeah, basically I was talking shit to the bartender, you know, acting like a dickhead, yeah. And um, this a, a crew assembled around the bartender and this dude basically just hit me while I was talking shit. I went down and then they all kind of <clears> kicked <throat> my ass and... And then I pretty much woke up in a hospital bed. I have patches of memories yeah, yeah. from there, but I have to kick the head again and black out a little bit. Yeah, Just so So that was um that was that. That was um my That's most nice. recent injury. <laughs> God damn. You might say. It is the most recent. Yeah. I've been injured many times. Um I hear you. You know. It's the worst part is the psychological coming back psychologically. Yeah. See, yeah. I've, I haven't had like any like crazy injuries like that, like wired jaw or anything like that. You know, like 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 when I first left the house, like I went with my roommate to like basically have like a picnic. Like she was doing some work on one side of town, the other side of town. It's like right by. It's called the West Side in Santa Cruz. West Cliffs is like this road that runs right along these cliffs on the pacific ocean it's fucking gorgeous so i brought my fucking shakes or whatever up there you know <laughs> and like a, a book and some herb and i was just chilling but this was a you know a week after the surgery and and i was really thin and uh, and one thing i noticed was like sitting on the bench like if a motorcycle or a skateboard or a bicycle or someone like would like walk by and come like kind of close to the bench, I would kind of like brace myself. Like I was like pretty like timid. Yeah. PTSD you know? probably. Yeah. Yeah. On a, on, on a, on a certain level. Yeah. I think that's, yeah. You know, Definitely for a certain level. I mean, this is white people shit, you know, it's like first Even world problems and all jump that. Jump my body and kick my goddamn head, you know. Right, but I just, I don't want to sit here and fucking be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. But, I mean, we're just having a conversation. Yeah, about, I but, hear you. <laughs> but, <clears throat> yeah, no, it's just, um, that's a fucking, that's an injury, you know. And, um, you know, I come back, I, I, I hope I'll come back for it. It's like, I just think as you get older, you're more aware of things or you just internalize things more like you're like you know like you're aware of possibilities like in the past like you get injured okay it's like when i was 22 i broke my jaw i got my jaw wired shut it's like just an injury it's like holy fuck this sucks they're gonna fix me yeah i'm i'm 22 i'm still under my parents health insurance not that life bad. is not that bad yeah you know you know, 34, you break your jaw. It's the second time. I mean, the first one was a hairline fracture down the middle of the chin right here. And now I have a titanium plate on either side of my jaw. So, you know, it's just like I'm in the position now where... Are those going to stay in there, those titanium plates? Yes. Oh, man. So... Iron man. <laughs> I'm in a position now where it's like I'm just, you know, I'm 34 and I'm aware that, you know... Things can go wrong, yeah. or whatever, and like bones don't always heal the way the doctor wants to, and yeah. I might, oh, I definitely won't have the same bite. Yeah, you know, you're definitely off. You have two titanium plates. Yeah, I don't know was that bad. And so I mean, it was already like I couldn't open a small package with my teeth and yeah. shit. So, but you're 34 and you're aware of these possibilities. So I'm just literally in a place where I'm fucking like hoping and praying that the shit heals correctly. Yeah. You know? Um, and that's all I can do and just fucking basically move forward and, you know, not to get into a whole thing, but just do my best to not be an idiot and put myself into positions. And there's a lot of personal decisions that I've, I've come to make yeah. about my life recently. As a result, it, this kind of shit will make you fairly introspective. Yeah. <laughs> put fucking ducks in a row a little bit, you, you know? know? So, so, but it's a good thing. Yeah, well, plus those guys, I guess. Yeah, it, ha yeah. it has to be. Well, check this out. I had a toothache right before it happened, right? That and they were gone. like, while well, they're in there. No, they took out the wisdom teeth while they're in there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're in there anyways, free of charge to pop these things out for you. <laughs> well, I don't know. I haven't gotten a bill yet, so oh. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, that's funny. Put them back in. I can't, put, I can't yeah. pay for that. I don't want to pay for those. Uh, 
What's uh what's the worst industry in, in, injury you've ever sustained? I don't know. The one I like to tell the story about when I was like younger, um, mm -hmm. my parents were away and uh we had a Jehovah's Witness as a babysitter for like over the night. And, like me and my mom was like five, six G's, like, you know, two years older than me, so we're messing around on the beds. I can jump off one bed and another I try to draw kick him. He fucking stuffs me with a pillow. I go down and snap my arm in two places. Wait, <laughs> was he like, he knocked on the door and came in the no, house? No, 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 we're like in the bedroom like wrestling and stuff like that. He but was, he just, he happened to be a Jehovah's Witness. No, 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 it's a, it was a female, like, my parents knew like, pa their parents and like, okay. we're going away for the weekend, Got had it. to stay over and stuff like that. Had to put the Luigi board out on the porch for her to even <laughs> stay in there. Like, seriously, <laughs> she, she give a Luigi board, she's like, yeah, she's like, put it on the porch, I won't stay, she got real serious. <laughs> So, like, I go, like, jump, I fucking, yeah, I do this, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> you said Luigi board. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. They get fucked out about that type of shit, dude. <laughs> so, I'm fucking, so I break my fucking arm, it's at, like, not, at nighttime or whatever, for some reason it doesn't take me to the hospital, I don't know if it's a religious thing or whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> what? So, like, my sister, like, the next day I has to, like, sneak away, like, call my mom's friend to take me to the hospital, and they broke it in two places, so they had to, like, set it, so the like, doctor had to, like, pull on it and, like, set it. So, like, that was, like, the, the you know, one of the best story, the injury, you know, because, like, they didn't take me, and I had to sleep on it and shit like that. Oh, man. Yeah, dude, it was pretty serious. Did she have a babysit for you? Oh, no, fuck that. No way. No My way. parents were pissed. Did she <laughs> try to push her, like, religious doctrine yeah, upon you? Uh, no, no, I don't remember any of that. I just remember getting my arm snapped. How old were you? Like, five, six, or something like that. I was pretty young. And then I broke it again. Seventh grade, same arm, different bone. Mm. That wasn't that bad, just a broken arm. Didn't you, uh, what happened? You had a sl your arm in a sling at yeah, one time. Yeah, I fucking dumped my motorcycle. That's right, yeah, that's I right. Broke my collarbone and knocked myself out pretty good on that one. I got a photo of the three of us. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And, uh, when was and, it? Al and Alex or something went at their place on Plum Island. Yeah. And you got a sling. That was a uh, dumb move on my part. Oh, I wasn't really dumb, but I fucked up and dumped the bike. Dunk myself up big time on that one. Yeah. How fast were you going that time? It's five miles an hour. I was bringing it down the hill to like wash it, put it away for the season. Like my back tire locked up and the wheel cut, the fork cut, and I just like shot forward. So like broke it and then like had to go to work, like rebroke it twice afterwards too. It was like all like fucked up. Did you um, like roll down the hill? No, I just like went, I went down the hill and the back end kicked out and the fork locked and just shot over the fucking handlebars. I just like, didn't have my helmet on, so I was just going down the street, you know? Yeah. It's like, face first. My mom, like, in the window saw the whole entire thing. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, she didn't like that too much. <laughs> and you got knocked out. Oh, yeah, big time. I woke up, I was like, I'm okay. I, like, picked up my bike. Like, my uh, some kid was there, Robbie was there, cleaned the bike, so they like, helped me out. I, like, got off the street and, like, went for a walk, came back, and went to the hospital. Whoa. Yeah. Sma I smashed my head a few times, definitely. And that's, like, like... I remember when I was, like, a kid, I could do, like, spins in the pool. You know, like, now, now I do them, I get, like, dizzy and shit like that. I'm going to smash that a few times. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's... Might be... I was just I was just listening to another podcast about, like, uh, guys named Dr. Mark Gordon, I think it is, talking about, like, guys were coming back from, like, um, like, war and stuff with that PSD, how, like, TRT, testosterone replacement, how it does, like, more than just, like, juice you up and, like changes chemicals uh. this guy was like on a whole like slew of drugs and he tried to like change it up change it up to trt like the testosterone like change them up and like like help them out i guess and stuff like that so just something to listen to, listen to you know because head injuries are pretty serious we don't know anything about them you know yeah and that's an injury that 20 years down the road like look at fucking junior say you know what i'm saying like like i was the nicest guy ever to fucking kill himself like you don't you never think that it's crazy, like, yeah, well, they say, yeah, a lot of the old-time boxers and shit, oh, are, yeah, they, get, they get really bummed out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, you know, that could be a lifestyle thing, yeah. too, I mean. Yeah, you don't have to mandate it more and stuff like that. Well, they're also living their lives in fucking yeah, yeah, hotels oh, and yeah, casinos, yeah, yeah, you definitely. know. <laughs> could lend itself to depression, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the head thing's pretty serious, but, like, you know, if you have joints and stuff like that down the road, that's gonna, that's gonna, that's gonna get you. Oh. Yeah, you see it with like older people and stuff like that, or people now. <laughs> well, I got that goddamn sciatica yeah. too, you know. Makes you look like a seven-year-old man walking around. Yeah, it's, it's pretty tough. Hans Mole Man. Hans <laughs> Mole Man. Seriously. It's pretty tough. Oh, shit. But, how about you, Ben? 
Um, yeah. I haven't really had any bad injuries. I've avoided a couple really bad ones, <laughs> just like by the grace of God, I guess. Uh, one time I was skateboarding uh, one night down a hill in West Newbury with our buddy Brad. Um, it was probably like four in the morning after a few beers. It was probably an awful idea at the time, but we did it anyway. And uh, we were just skating down this hill, and I started like bombing. I was going so fast, <laughs> fast as I've ever gone, and got the speed wobbles. And so I'm pumping away. There no, there was <laughs> there was no pulling out of it. And so my first idea was like, I'm gonna get to the side of the road, and I'll, I'll bail into one of the lawns, land on the grass, and hope for the best. So I tried to ease my way over, and it just it it got bad real fast. So I just jumped off. And I was going so fast that as soon as my foot hit the ground, it launched me <laughs> into a somersault. And I landed on my shoulder uh, and just barely grazed my head on the cement. Yeah. And uh, Brad pulls like pulls up next to me. He's like, holy shit, are you okay? And I'm like, I think so. He's like, do you hit your head? And I was like, no, I think I'm good. And I got up and my whole shoulder, one shoulder on my left side was um, skinned and my right knee was skinned. Um, I had really good road rash on my elbow and a little tiny, tiny, tiny scrape on yeah. my forehead. And I was like, holy shit, like, I forget how old, I was like maybe 26 at the time. I'm like, I'm too old to like <sighs> die on my skateboard in the middle of the night because I'm not wearing a helmet and being yeah. stupid. You've made it pretty far without uh, some injuries, huh? I have. That's pretty yeah. good. And then there was another time I was crossing the street, minding my own business and got it. By a car. <laughs> what? Um, we were down. Um, I was going downtown. I was actually going to meet our buddy Mike. Um, we were going to watch the Red Sox game, and I'm walking across the street, and uh, this woman pulls up. It was a four way intersection. She pulls up at the stop sign, like directly across from me, and she stops. So I, I cross the street. I'm in the crosswalk, and she starts to turn up the street, and she turns like right into me. <laughs> and uh, I was able to, like, kind of get my hands on her hood and like kind of push myself off it and uh she just sent me flying and I remember flying <laughs> through the air landed like flat on my back and I was holding my phone and all I remember was like landing and keeping the phone like up in the air <laughs> so I didn't drop the phone save the phone save the phone at all costs and um and as soon as she hit me it was like if you've ever, you know, you guys know, like you've been smacked in the face or something, you're just like, oh you're, yeah, your fight or flight like jumps in, and I was like ready to kill whoever's in the car. <laughs> I jumped up, I ran over, and I started screaming. I was like, get the fuck out of the car, like screaming. And I look in, and it's like this middle aged woman, get out of the car, get the fuck out of the car. And, uh, she's like, who's this maniac who's like out of the car? He's gonna kill me. And so she's staring at me, and she's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And as she's apologizing, she reaches over and locks the door. That's awesome. <laughs> and after like maybe 10 or 15 seconds, I was like, all right, all right. And I like calm, I calm down, I started to walk away. She like cracks over, she's like, are you okay? I'm so yeah. sorry I didn't see you. I was like, yeah, yeah, I think I'm okay. I was like, I'm really sorry that I yelled at you. <laughs> but no. you did fucking hit me yeah. with your she's car. Like, no, it's yeah. okay, it's okay. <laughs> you deserve to yell after that. Yeah, so and then like the police came and, uh, they were like, oh, you should probably go to the hospital and get checked out. And um, so, like, while I, was, <laughs> while I was in the ambulance, I was like, can you just make sure you tell that lady I'm really sorry that I yelled at her? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Did they, like, arrest her or give her a ticket or uh, anything like that? She got excited and then... Uh, and she hit somebody, yeah. dude. <laughs> She's got to get some kind of sight. Well, I'm just curious because I feel like if it were you or me, we'd be fucking, ha you know, we'd yeah. be hanging from the gallows. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like yeah. yeah, seriously. If really. we hit someone with a car, if, yeah. if, if, if the shoe was on the other foot, if you hit a woman, yeah. with, if you were driving as a young yeah. man and fucking hit an old woman with a car, forget it. Yeah, Game don't. over, dude. Yeah. Even if she was, okay. I mean... The way they, I handled, they'd examine you. They'd be like, well, we're going to look at your license yeah. and everything else, you know? The way that I, I have no doubt about probably that. probably helped her out because I was like, I'm okay, I'm okay. It's not a big deal. Like, we're fine. Like, I, I can made tell. It, I'm I'm take it. I can uh, take it. I'm tough. If I made a big deal out of it, it probably <laughs> would have given her. I mean, I could have probably fucking sued her or some shit like that. Yeah, sue you? Yeah. Sue everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't interested in that. Sue everybody. <laughs> and all I got out of that was some uh, 
like a bruise on my leg and like my back was like a little messed up for a day or two. She didn't even like find out where you lived and bring you some banana cake or some shit like that. She's probably scared to death. That's a good tweak out there. Fuck you on a fucking car. (laughs) But my first thought when I got hit was like it had to be some like stupid high school kid or something. Like some kid was just not paying attention. And then by the time I was already yelling when I realized it was like a. a She deserved deserved the scare. Yeah. Yeah. She deserved everything she got and more. Set her, set her straight a little bit. <laughs> Scared straight. <and> like... <laughs> on the streets. The scary on your streets. Oh, my God. That's awesome. I mean, so, yeah, I mean... Uh, I'm glad you're okay. Thanks. Mm. Yeah. The, old, the, the worst pain that I ever had, though, from an injury was uh, in high school. Um, it was, like, preseason for soccer. And we had a scrimmage one day, and I pulled my groin so bad. Like, it, I, it felt like it tore. And I was just like, I remember going over to the assistant coach, be like, I think I pulled my groin. Like, it like hurts bad. He's like, Oh, you, there's some stretches you can do. He's like, Show me a couple stretches and stretch yeah, it out. Nope. Like, no, I like, couldn't walk for a, a, a while. Like, and that's a bad muscle. Like every yeah, everything you do. Time you flex it at all, like, you move the wrong way in bed. Like, flex that flexes. groin. Yeah, I remember when I was young. I was like seventh grade. I was like stretching. I pull my neck muscle. Do like hurt it like go and like maybe oh. s- like throw up I, like hurt it. Oh my <laughs> yeah, god! Dude. I was like I'm like getting sick. I was like oh, oh my god. god, yeah, dude, oh. it was like bad. This whole bad. left side. Any muscle, oh. like serious muscle. I was, like in the morning yeah. like, stretching for school. I was, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually thinking about. I've seen on TV. Have you guys seen this uh, sciatica pump thing? It's like oh. it's it, it it wraps around your uh, upper like calf. Yeah. And it's supposed to, you know, alleviate pressure in your thigh and sciatic realm. What's it called? Um, check out, uh, I don't know, sciatic, uh, sciatic pump or whatever, sciatic. So it's going to, like, uh, relieve the back pain? That's the yeah, that's it's like it, it's like an as seen on TV is type of deal. Oh. Is it made out of copper? Sorry. Is there a band called Sciatica? I don't know. It should be. It should be your band. I I, I want to do yeah. like a, a brutal punk metal band called Sciatica. <laughs> There's an scene on TV. Yeah. Fifteen bucks, twenty bucks. Yeah, yeah, that thing. Right. Be act. What is that? Be active. Yeah, be active. What do you got? What do you, you got? Think it's gonna work. I don't know. They got, they got Walmart. Bracelets. What's that? They got a Walmart. They got a Walmart. Let's go out there. Yeah, maybe we'll go there. Do a test on air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what else do you do for that? Have you had like a doctor look at it? I mean, I go to a chiropractor. Um, I'm saying though, like, what's the, the final? Can they, can they treat they, this part? Can they surgerize that? Can they catch you open? That's like the worst case scenario. Yeah, yeah, that's like you don't want that. But I'm saying though, like, yeah, people. I think there is people that have had surgery for or it. You just work it out. My situation is supposedly there's a. I fracture my coccyx. <laughs> you fracture coccyx. <laughs> Coccyx. The lower end, bottom part of your tailbone. Oh, and, oh uh, yeah, the coccyx. Yeah, the coccyx bone. Um, and the sand dunes. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was I was near Bonnie Dune, California, uh, but uh, yeah. I, no, I was at uh, Scotch Valley Skate Park, and there's this um, like a uh, quarter pipe that kind of turned the coping turns into this. Like the transition goes down from being a quarter pipe, and rather than the transition, there's like the coping goes out to this, um, becomes like a box, you know what I mean? And so, I think I was just trying a 5 0 grind, and you know, and it's like that's one I used to do when I was a little kid all the time, but you know, you get into this zone where you're just fucking doing 50 50s for like, you know, the over 30 fucking 50 50 zone and you know i'll do them front side and back side but it's just like i just wanted to like this sounds so lame but i just wanted to like get some of the more consistent tricks since i'm feeling more comfortable skating bowls and shit i wanted to bring back some of my mini ramp tricks (laughs) you know what i mean from when i was a kid you know And so I was just working more on five O's rather than just doing a fucking fifty fifty on every fucking piece of coping I come across. And you know, I leaned way too far back and I fell directly on my tailbone. And that was in late May. And then like getting on the plane to come back here in June was like, you know, and it makes sense the way the chiropractor explained this to me the other day, is like that would have been like a week later. And he said basically what happens is 
you split because on the plane ride back here in June was the first time I noticed how bad it was like the worst sciatica I've ever felt. It was yeah. like it felt like some, yeah. like someone was just like like a fucking a troll was just grabbing that yeah, shit yeah, yeah. like arr, 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 you know and I was like holy fuck this is painful so um now it's explained to me that like the the tailbone that lower coccyx split in half and it won't ever fuse back together because there's a disc there so now the bone's trying to grow back and it's grown a spurn oh. and that's what's causing the pain is like you know what I mean so so it's like a spur and like more than anything that's fucking with you. Yeah, and which means it'll go yeah. away because yeah. it'll like grow into itself and like, you know what I mean? But I'm looking here like on, it's like acupuncture, drugs or surgery pretty much. Like, yeah. Like acupuncture not going to do shit for you, it doesn't sound like. No, it's I mean. It's all pain management. Yeah. The chiropractor knows out, what's up. I mean, I've tried a little acupuncture. I've tried deep massage. I mean, all these things make you feel better. Yeah. Because they're relaxing. But you got to keep you know? going back and back. Fix it. Mm, you know, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's more of a live, you have to live with it type deal. Yeah, I mean, I just, I, I living with it's one thing, but I mean, like right now, it's like there's days where I can hardly walk and shit. So it's like, that's horrible. You know, I want to just get back to skating and shit, which is the number one thing for me. So it's like, put you in the first place. <laughs> what's that? Put you there in the first place. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> it's, um, uh, that's, that's like a metaphor for life. It's, uh, Burl's. Would you? What's the name of the snake that eats itself? Aurora Burrows? Never heard of it. Aurora Burrows? No, that's Festival of Lights. That's fucking Northern. That's the What's Northern the name Lights. of the fucking. The Turbo Negro uh, snake? Uh, I know what you're saying, but I can't think of the name. It's like Aurora Burrows. Aurora Burrows. Yeah. Aurora Burrows. Yeah, there you go. It's like that, you know? It's just like that. <laughs> What's, um. I was trying to tell somebody the stint last night you did in your car. For skating bowls, and you used to do like 30, 30 days straight in a car, skating bowls? Uh, well, when I drove to, like, when I packed up all my shit and yeah. I left here and went back out to Seattle, I wasn't certain. I mean, I think I knew in my heart of hearts that I was going to Seattle, but at the time I was kind of looking at Denver and San Francisco as well. Yeah. So I pretty much just headed west, like. Yeah. To that general area? Well, my friend Kevin lives in, um, Westchester PA so I figured I'd see him and it was really raining that day it was a day it was right before those big ass hurricanes came yeah. to the east coast and wiped out like Atlantic City and but, shit but it was like a skate inspired trip kind of it was just your, there was your stops were skate inspired or, oh yeah everything yeah. like I didn't have an agenda well the first I went to see Kevin first just because I didn't know like if and when I was coming yeah. back to the East Coast, Good really, you know. Yeah. So up. I figured I would drive. There was um a couple. I went to um. Bethlehem, PA, and it was drizzling, but I skated um a park there. Then and I understand Grindline had just gotten the contract while I was there, and they were doing like the next phase. Um, it's done now, but at the time they were just staging the bowls while I was there. But I skated a little bit of in Bethlehem, PA. And then I cruised to, um, I uh, stayed with Kevin in Westchester. And then um, from there I went through like all like weird. So basically the idea was I was going west, but I didn't have any agenda. And the only thing that I had was my smartphone. And I was so just I was like. Saying, I would say where you get your, uh, all your information from <laughs> parks and stuff like that from like. Like I would wake just, up in the morning and there's this website called Concrete Disciples. Yeah. And they have all the skate parks by state and they're like pretty good on it they're on it they're on it with reviews and stuff yeah. and there's a few you know i kind of know what to look for i mean it's like after a while it gets to be like hunting or something yeah, you know you, you yeah. know you kind of know like i smell it something over here <laughs> yeah or you just i mean it's easier for us because you have the internet and like there's um certain contractors like yeah. you know grind line yeah, right um now. dreamland airspeed mm -hmm. the guys that did new report yeah um california skate parks and like when you go to their park you can distinctly tell between those guys or is that kind of oh yeah yeah they got yeah there. like to me i always think of grindline has like really in mo in a lot of cases like brutal transitions with huge pool coping like yeah. it's there and it's like it, it's seattle so it's like you know it's like super like their shit's gnarly fast. and fucking buck and fast yeah. and tight and dreamland's oregon so it's a little bit more like it's still gnarly, but it's a little bit more roly-poly, smooth, 
with like creative expression like you know they i think dreamland really builds like the most creative shit yeah you know but grindline just to me builds the gnarliest and and you know they're to each their own they're all good in their own way of course also as far as like this i mean i really when i lived in seattle i was kind of in the flux of like the skate park contracting and building universe like yeah. the nexus of it because grindline and dreamland were right there in town so oh, they, yeah. you know they're building parks in oregon and washington all the fucking time and yeah. i would always go check them out so i was sampling new parks as they came out so i got a familiarity with like what the companies were up to and where, where they're, they're going. going as a you know what i mean that's cool and now they're building parks everywhere right now colorado can't, can't wyoming them. you, you, you really them. can't but um that was the mission that i had was to just to taste as many of them as i could in yeah, the country yeah. you know how many jump skating do you, <coughs> you count or you um rough so idea. let's see bethlehem i went to um and again i just followed concrete disciples and the weather yeah you know and just basically knew I had enough money and gas and weed to fucking do what but, I wanted for a while. That was more of a West Coast deal, up and down, right? I, I had in the pools. I had all my shit. This was a cross. It, it was a cross. Yeah, this yeah. was like because it was the first time I wasn't with a girlfriend or a band that I was going across country. Yeah, you so do I was just the like, fuck you wanted. yeah, I'm going to fucking every skate park yeah. from here to there, you know, pretty much like every skate park that's like reasonably like in my way. So you know? you sleep there, skate there. I would sleep there. I did I did a lot of driving and it would just be like at that time too I was just really like there was like something inside of me that just like yeah. I could like hard, I could sleep for an hour or two and then drive for 9 hours and skate for an hour yeah. and like I was just super on it. Someone there was a the switch inside, yeah. There was a fire inside oh, yeah, for sure, you know. It. So I I stayed at some hotels and I stayed at some skate parks but it was starting to get, I mean it was like I left in October so I stayed in more I didn't really stay in my car that much yeah. on that trip but uh yeah it was sick man I mean I I recommend um to anybody if you know it's like a friend of mine said to me too he said something interesting he's like you know there's something so interesting about the American psyche that just it makes you feel good when you're behind the auto behind the wheel of an automobile on the open road it's like oh it's, yeah it's definitely. a soothing feeling like they talk about like on top gear and stuff like that you know like open road and like yeah you know, like it's awesome you, you know, know? You, you get on an interstate and yeah. you're just burning through states yeah. and you know you 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 know and it's just life on the road i mean it's 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 harder to do now because so much of it is all the same there's always a fucking best buy and a yeah. fucking applebee's or whatever you see all the same shit but if you can kind of dig in and find, like, the little cafe or yeah, whatever, yeah. dude, you, you, I mean, you meet some crazy, interesting people and see some rad stuff, you know? Meet America. Meet America. Uh -huh. How you doing, America? <laughs> How you feeling? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I guess. I don't know. Is there, is there, is, does anyone else have anything they want to say? Oh, I'm good. I don't... <clears throat> we're, we're 43 minutes in. That's, that's pretty good. It's, not bad, but... it's ambitious. Hopefully um, this hasn't been super boring for everybody. It's our f first podcast, so we're not exactly sure how to conclude it other than say uh, thanks for listening and have a great day. If you do listen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you made it this far, congratulations. Yeah. Uh, we'll get the next one. I think um, we could reasonably have a guest in here and yeah. sort of interview them. Someone interesting. Yeah. Like soon, while I'm here in the right boy. Yeah. If you guys are down. Who's interesting? We'll talk about that uh, we'll off the air. Off the air. Hey, um, well... Um, We'll post this podcast and leave in your comments who uh, who you want us to interview, uh, you know. Or if you want us to interview you, get in touch with us, all right? So peace and thanks for listening. So long.